Colorado State game got postponed, I wanted to play a game kind of midweek, um, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday. I, I wanted to be able to maybe give them an extra day to go home, but get something where we had some, you know, game sweat going a little bit. Uh, but the problem was, and like you saw, Nevada added Kansas. Well, they had, I believe, four cancellations or postponements or whatever they had, so they had room to add a game. We've only had one, and if our intention is to play Colorado State, if we had added a game, we would have been one over, and we wouldn't have been able to play the Colorado State game. So uh, just working with our administration on it, uh, trying to keep all doors open. So you know, we want to play the full amount of games, uh, but the hope is still to play Colorado State here. They, they, they look like a Big Ten team, you know, in the sense of size, um, skill offensively. We, we, we've got to build our roster moving towards that. Uh, I don't know if necessarily playing two bigs, but we've got to get bigger. Um, and, you know, I think you're going you're gonna to give some and you're also going to lose some with how you play. Like, we can be, with the way that we play at times, very hard to guard but we're not great defensively and rebounding the ball because we're small. Uh, so we have to use whatever weakness is a strength uh, to the best of our ability, uh, but it's a unique challenge. But I would love for our roster as we continue to build it to get significantly bigger uh, than it is right now. Do you coach find something in the last game where after playing this number of guys, the effect yeah, I, I liked it for sure. We played 10. Uh, you know, JF was the one who hadn't been playing, uh, where I kind of said, okay, like we got to play him because I think House is probably playing a little bit too many minutes. Um, you know, KJ's are plenty sufficient backup to mash. I mean, he could be playing more minutes as well. So I liked it. I did. I did like it. And uh, I probably should have gone to it a little bit more uh, earlier. Well, I think, I think Sherfield and Cambridge are what we hope our backcourt evolves into. Uh, now Cambridge has got more size, certainly, uh, but they've got experience. You know, they've got, I believe Cambridge sat out, uh, as well as Sherfield sat out, you know, so they're older. You know, they, they got those guys right when they got there and sat them out, which obviously transfer rule changed. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I think our roster, you know, and, and who knows with transfer portal and everything, but I think it can evolve into something really, really good. Uh, but they're just so young, and so inexperienced. So as, as challenging as it may be at times for us, I think if we keep the core group together and keep getting better and better, I think it could be a really good uh, backcourt and, and, and some of the other pieces as well. You talked about how you would have liked to have an extra game, so you guys kind of like sweat it out a little bit. Um, how have you been using this break to be productive and how do you make sure you guys are not cold against Nevada? Well, again, I think every coach doesn't want this long of a break and we would have added a game if we could have. Um, I, I think that's why Nevada, even they go play at Kansas, you know, I mean, that's like the toughest place to play in the country, but they wanted to play a game. They wanted, you know, so it just is what it is. I mean, it's, it's play the games, people expect you to win them regardless of what the circumstances are. Um, and, uh, you know, you can't make excuses, you, especially when you're playing sports in a pandemic. I, I don't know what's going to happen today or tomorrow. Um, we're just going to adjust and adapt and not complain and keep getting better. So uh, I don't like this long of a break, but I'm trying to play sports in the middle of a pandemic and it just, there's going to be more postponement, postponements, there's going to be more. It's just the way it is right now. Do you make any adjustments for practice, like maybe make them more intense? I think our, our goal as practice is always to be intense, especially, you know, we, we have such a young team, we're trying to build a culture. So uh, trying to get them back in shape uh, for sure has been a main focal point. You always got to be recruiting. I know you like to focus on the next game ahead, but how much are you watching the rest of the conference right now? I mean, if there's a game on, I'll watch it. I watched. Uh, uh, Utah State boys he was on the other day. I mean, but you know, I, you're, you're kind of locked in on, on the next opponent as much as you possibly can. Uh, I do know we were looking yesterday, I believe there's six teams in the Mountain West from the top 60 in the net. That's pretty darn good. Uh, you know, so 
I was looking at the Pac-12. I think the Pac-12's got three. Um, and that's not a knock to the Pac-12. We all know it's a great conference, but this is a terrific, terrific basketball conference. Chris, going back to Nevada and Sherfield and, and all the big guards that they have, uh, did you guys look back on the on SMU for Kendrick Davis, what he did any comparisons to try to you know, show the guys a little bit, you know, maybe something to try to keep their play against Nevada? I don't think it was anything we did. I think Davis is just a really good player, um, an older player. I think SMU is a very old, terrific team. You know, I mean, we wanted to add that series for our fans, um, but we're not quite ready to beat that team. Um, we give them credit. I, I think that's a, that's a team that could win the AAC. I really believe it. Uh, so good experience for our guys. I think those younger guards probably saw Davis, saw how happy in control he was the whole game. Um, like, Really good player. Four of those guys couldn't go home, uh, so it's very, very important that uh, we do something for them. You know, I don't want them just sitting in Lobo Village by themselves. Uh, so we had them over Christmas Eve, had some of the staff over. Um, my kids are getting to a point, like when I grew up, I was around you know, Kentucky program my whole life, and, and it was a really important part of my life. Um, and my kids, like my son Jack, he's so into it. He's a ball boy every game. He just loves it. And uh, you know, so they're sitting there playing Xbox. Like that, that, that is what it's all about. Um, so yeah, it's, we want this to be a family. Uh, it gets harder and harder, you know, as as you do this to create that atmosphere, just because transfers, all of these things. So uh, yes, we, we, we made sure to open our doors to any you know staff players. So it's good for them to see the family side of me, but it's also great for my family to be around them. Yeah. And we're going to see even more as we go through a legit conference season. It is, you know, when you lose as many guys to transfers, we inherit four players, scholarship players. I mean, that's like 80% of your team you're going to have to add in the middle of a pandemic. So you're kind of guessing in a lot. Do, do I think we got a lot wrong? No, I don't. Now. I, I like all these young guys. I really do. Um, you know, Saquon's the only real senior uh, who has a decision to make from the COVID year. He could come back, and at the end of the year, we'll discuss that with them and do whatever's best for him. Um, and go from there. So, you know, they, they have a great attitude. They've all got great potential. Uh, we do need to get bigger and stronger. Some of that just will happen in the weight room as their bodies mature because they are young. Uh, so we'll see, you know, I mean, it's, it's, we will add whoever we think can help this program move forward.